And second, the truck is actually blow-through carbureted, which means that any kind of vacuum-operated anything will not work under boost. That's why I went mechanical secondaries on both the charger and on the truck. Before we move on to the next topic, I really want to show you guys this hidden feature that they're not really talking about, but it's actually really important, especially when we move on to boosted applications, and it's this little rod right here. This rod is actually the primary to secondary linkage, so that is ultimately what controls the opening point for the mechanical secondaries on this carburetor. So depending on where this thing is set up, this thing will either have an earlier or a later opening point. So you can see that the opening right now, it's about a 60-40 or 70-30 split. You can get a kit online that'll let you play with these rods and it'll allow you to divide that up even further. You can get things like an 80-20, a 90-10, or even a one-to-one -one linkage kit. And the way Proform set up these holes is that you can actually take advantage of different spots on this carburetor to change that. So maybe instead of a 90-10, it'd be like a 15-85 or somewhere in between. Because you have the capability of moving the rod around, you can subdivide it further. Proform's updated race series carburetor does not come in black, unfortunately, but their gas version comes with annular boosters, which is a huge upgrade over the standard down leg boosters. The boosters on this are absolutely massive, but the main difference between a regular down leg booster and annular booster is that an annular booster will take up a lot of space in the throttle bore, but because you have that added space, you have a lot more room to put more orifices and you can actually spray out the fuel like a shower head versus one of these where the fuel actually hits the booster and then it relies on air pressure to spray out like a shower head. So you still get a shower head effect, but you get it much wider on an annular booster. If we take a close look at the boosters, you guys can see how large the entry is for the E85 version of the carburetor. And then on the gasoline version, you guys can see that it's a significantly smaller hole. As promised, I'm going to explain to you guys why you guys don't have a secondary power valve on these carburetors. First of all, the majority of carburetors do not need a secondary power valve. The number of cars that I have seen with a secondary power valve that actually needed it, I could probably count on one hand. You need a really large engine spinning a lot of RPM in order to take advantage of that much fuel going into the secondary side. Where a secondary power valve actually becomes very critical is when you are in a boosted application. I'll get deeper into that in its own video. But let's go ahead and check this out. So you have the Proform main body, and you guys can see that the bottom of it is drilled out so you have a passage for the power valve if needed. But then if you look on top, you have like this lead plug that you guys can probably drill out. And then once you drill that out, you will have access to that vacuum port for the secondary power valve. If you guys look at the metering block, you have a plug that comes supplied. And if you take that plug off, you actually have the hole that's pre-drilled into these metering blocks and you have removable power valve restrictor channels, which is really nice because a lot of the older carburetors will have this hole here completely blocked and you won't be able to install a secondary power valve. At least with these race series carburetors, you will be able to have the option to install a secondary power valve if you need it. The second thing is that because it comes with replaceable power valve restrictor channels, if you do decide that you need a secondary power valve, the tuning option is already there. You don't have to drill it, you don't have to tap it. You are good to go. And the third thing about this is that the channels that are actually given to you are plugged. So you have blanks in the power valve restrictor channels. So here's a hot rod secret for you guys since you guys have been sticking around for this video. So a lot of hardcore racers that don't need the secondary power valve, they will do this. They will plug the channel going to the vacuum port. They will plug the power valve restrictor channels and then they will take the plug out for the secondary power valve and then run it like this. So what it allows you to do is it actually gives you a couple more cc's of fuel capacity to this carburetor on the secondary side. Let's talk about the fuel bowls for a sec. This carburetor comes with nitro fill floats, but not only that, the floats are already notched for jet extensions. This is especially important for the secondary side because the secondary side does come with factory jet extensions. If we move over to the outside of the fuel bowl, you're going to have a clear idea of how this fuel bowl is set up. So this area right here, this is the trap door. I'll show you guys on the other fuel bowl in a second. And this is the fuel ramp. As fuel enters the needle and see, it travels down, hits this fuel ramp, and this fuel ramp shoots the fuel and fills back up the bowl. On older carburetors, this fuel ramp is actually much higher. So by allowing the fuel ramp to go lower, they can increase the overall capacity of the fuel bowl, but then also give the fuel a a smoother transition into filling up the rest of the bowl. What's really cool is that these fuel bowls can be swapped 
left and right. So typically you either have to decide on whether a fuel bowl is going to be fed from the driver's side or the passenger side. But with these new style of fuel bowls, you can actually pull these plugs off and replace this one with this one or this one with this one. And then you can either have either or you can have both if you really wanted to. The factory fitting that's installed on these carburetors are set up for a 5 8 inverted flare fitting. But if you really wanted to, you can pull that off and you can install a set of these. This particular one is a dash 8 feed line. You can also get them in dash 6 or you can get them in a couple different other variations. I don't necessarily like the inverted flare. They tend to leak a little bit, especially on the cheaper fuel rails. It's not necessarily the fittings fault. It's just the way the fuel rails are designed. I don't like them. I'd much rather prefer to run AN style of fuel rails just because I would prefer my engine not catch on fire that's always good but a huge majority of the fuel rails that are on the market are inverted flare so i can understand why they went with an inverted flare but like i said they use the universal thread pitch on here so if you wanted to replace these with something a little bit more high performance you could Looking at the bottom of the fuel bowl, you can see the cover for the accelerator pump. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a 30cc accelerator pump. There are aftermarket options out there to upgrade this to a 50cc, but the bolt pattern is essentially the same. So if you needed that extra bit of fuel, you could get it. You could also buy upgraded fuel squirters if you needed to, or in my case, I just end up drilling them out. And I'll show you guys how to do that in later videos. This particular one is black anodized. I really like the black finish on these carburetors. It looks really nice. I have nothing against the polished version of these carburetors, but something about black and purple just makes it look really good. So I just pulled the fuel bowl off of the polished one because it's easier to see on camera. As you guys can see, it still has the same 30cc accelerator pump cover. It has the same dual inlets, and this is the V2. This is the revised version of their Proform carburetor. The fuel ramp, as we mentioned on the other side, is the same, and the trap door is the same as well. So for overall, the casting seems to be almost identical as the V1 or the older version. The only difference is that because this is the E85 and it does have the 130 uh, needle and seat, you can see that it has a stainless steel right there, stainless steel needle and seat, whereas the other one had a brass one. Just like in the other one, this float bowl also has a notched float, which is also nitrofill. And in this polished one, you can actually see a clear view of how this trap door works. And then you can see the fuel ramp that I was talking about. And the trap door will also allow the capacity to increase. Well, it also does a little bit to prevent sloshing as well. Proform also has a really neat circle track version of these carburetors where the float looks like a little wedge, like a little triangle, and one side is actually bigger than the other side, and that's because circle track, they're always making a left turn similar to NASCAR, and so the carburetor is always kind of doing this or kind of doing this. So the float is there to compensate, keep the float fuel level up at an angle and keep everything running the way it's supposed to. You don't want to run these regular style floats in a circle track car. Any kind of circle track use, you want to go ahead and grab their circle track variant of the carburetor. But if you're making left and right turns, then just a regular version is fine. Something you can also tell is that aside from the notches, it also has these corners cut out of it as well. And that is just to give it a little bit more stability when the car is slightly cornering. So it's, when it's cornering like this, it allows the float to sit a little bit lower. And when it's cornering this way, same thing. So, so it's always nice to have a, that extra level of fuel control. And something I didn't notice at first was that it has a divot right here on this side where this side does not have a divot. And that's actually for the accelerator pump diaphragm. So when this thing sits all the way down, it doesn't smash the accelerator pump diaphragm. So, so that's neat that they thought about that too. The last thing we are going to talk about are these billet metering blocks, which is probably the most important part of a carburetor like this. 